this weekend, the Twins are wrapping up their longest home stand of the year. It's also been one of their best home stands of the year. Game two tonight between the Padres and the Twins. Last night, Joe Maurer with a triumphant return to the lineup for the Twins, getting a base hit in his first at bat and driving in the first run of the ball game. And a good Saturday evening to you from Target Field. Hall of Famer Burt Blylevin along with Dick Bramer. Historically, the month of June has not been a good month for the Minnesota Twins, but through the first half of this June, it might be the best June in Twins history. And the starting pitching has been a big, big factor in well, that. You know, it always comes down to pitching, pitching, pitching to carry a ball club into a nice winning streak. And the 12 Twins have won 12 out of the last 14 ball games, and the starting pitching has been outstanding. Combined 1.87 ERA over the 14 ball games. And today's starter, Scott Baker, he's part of that. I mean, his last outing, probably the best so far this year, a complete game victory against the Texas Rangers. A couple things happened for Baker in this ballgame. Got early run support, and boy, did he attack the strike zone. No walks, seven strikeouts in the nine innings, 112 pitches for Scott Baker. And we've seen that more and more, haven't we? Some early run support for the Twins, the guys on the top of the batting order doing a great job setting up the lineup. Boy, they really are. You, you know, you need some electricity at the top of the lineup, and the Twins found it with Ben Revere. He's done a good job. Since his second call-up, he is a completely different player. Line drives, base hits, picking up some RBIs, but scoring some runs. That's the most important thing. And also, Alexi Casilla hitting in that number two hole in 15 ball games. He loves hitting here at Target Field, hitting almost 390 here at Target Field, but he, like Rivera, doing their job getting on base. Target Field's known to have a big outfield. You need a center fielder who can cover a lot of ground, and the Twins have one in Ben Revere. Visit your local Northland Ford dealer or go to NorthlandFord.com. And by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. The tarp is being removed from Target Field as we speak. That means we've got game two coming up of this three-game series between the Twins and the San Diego Padres right here on Fox Sports North. I'm Robbie. It's Mikowski. Thanks for tuning in. 
When Denard Spann left with some upper body and concussion symptoms, the Twins didn't miss much of a beat, and in large part, that's because of the defense that Ben Revere has provided in center field. A week ago on Saturday, made a spectacular catch, laying out in what is now a photo in the Twins locker room. Last night, Revere lays out again. The ball ruled not a catch, but further replays showed that he did indeed catch the ball. And earlier today, I asked Ben Revere about the kind of pride he takes in his defense. Oh, you always got to take pride in your defense, especially uh, for me right now. It's just uh, you know, trying to make the squad. Uh, you know, defense is my main thing. You know, going to keep me up here in the majors. Uh, you know, coaches see that. They always want to always keep you for a long time, no matter where you play at. Scott Baker had a great start last time out. Can he make it two in a row? Find out next. It's Dick Kramer, Burp Wylev, and first pitch coming your way here on Fox Sports North. As interleague play continues, Padres, Twins, next. And against some substantial odds, we're getting started on time here tonight. The tarp was on the field all afternoon long. They've just uh, finished taking the tarp off the field. We're ready to go here for game two between the Padres and the Twins. Light rain is falling, and that might be the case for a good little while. But we hope to uh, have uninterrupted baseball here tonight from Target Field. Jason Bartlett in the Menards batting order for manager Bud Black. Kristen Orfield leading off. Then Jason Bartlett, Chase Headley, Ryan Ludwig, Brad Hoff, Anthony Rizzo, Nick Hundley, Will Venable, and Alberto Gonzalez. 
And Scott Baker on the mound here tonight, making his 14th start, coming off his fourth career complete game, an 8-1 win over the Texas Rangers last Saturday. Twins scored five runs in the first inning, one in the second, gave an early 6-0 lead, and he carried it right into a complete game. Making his 16th interleague start, his second against the San Diego Padres, the last one coming three years ago in San Diego. He won that ball game four to three. Northland four defense, and it has really tightened up as we have gotten into the month of June. Young, Revere, and Kadire in the outfield. Valencia, Nishioka, Casilla, Hughes at first base. Joe Maurer back behind the plate. That should help the defense as well. And Ben Revere has really put on a show defensively. Great coverage to his right, to his left, and as we saw last night, even though the catch didn't count, great uh, job of uh, coming in on little pop flies. Yeah, Denard Span still out with a concussion. He needs somebody out in center field with that cat-like instincts, and Ben uh, Revere definitely has that. Chris Denorfio will lead things off for the Padres. And strike one from Scott Baker. Well, the Padres actually out hit the Twins in the Twins 6 to 5 win last night, 11 to 10. The Norfia picked up a base hit in five at bats. Two strikes. San Diego's leadoff batter will be followed by Bartlett and then Headley. The Norfia, 30 years old, in his second season with the Padres, came up with the Reds, spent some time with the Oakland A's, his sixth major league season. Look foul into the upper deck. This way to get the evening started. Maybe a father and son sitting together and they get a foul ball right away. It's poked in right center field. And that is going to shoot the gap. And the Norfia starts the game with an extra base hit. And he wants a triple and will get it. So Chris Norfia driving one through the gap in right center. He's at third to start the ball game. Yeah, second triple of the year. He split that gap, and once you got around first base, boy, he found another gear. That breaking ball just left up. Good piece of hitting, just taking it the other way. And by the time the outfielders could get it back in, it's Kadire. Morphia diving into third base. So now Jason Bartlett Valencia will play even with the bag at third everybody else playing back they'll concede a run here in the first inning. As we said last night the Padres have greatly struggled scoring runs last night a tough ball game for them if they score five runs they better win because they're not going to do that very often. And here they'd like to get the first run of the game here in the first well, inning. One thing that uh, their pitching staff doesn't too many times give up six runs. <laughs> it's a very good pitching staff put together by Bud Black, the uh, manager of the year in the National League last year. And a high fastball with Bartlett falling across the plate. Baker does lead the staff with strikeouts, with 78 strikeouts. And 84 innings pitched. And the Padres do lead the major leagues in strikeouts. They have struck out 583 times. And we all think of Jason Bartlett as being a contact hitter, somebody who wouldn't strike out that much, but he's uh, struck out 43 times in 248 at bats. And Baker's ahead of him here, one and two. Baker with a good fastball, good riding fastball. And it went, looked like a fastball inside, or maybe a breaking ball, something at 83 miles an hour. And Bartlett does strike out. So a big strikeout here in the first inning for Scott Baker. It looked like a slider just stayed up a little bit, and Bartlett swung through it. One gone, Denorfi is still at third, and here's Chase Headley. Headley four hits in last night's ball game and five at bats. His second four hit game in the last three games for the Padres and he takes strike one. Headley in his fifth season with the Padres came up in 2007. Strike two taken. 
And Headley has struck out 50 times at 232 at bat. Challenges there for Scott Baker right off the get go. Let's see if he can get another strikeout. And he does. On a fastball head high, and Headley swings through it. Right, his fastball early on, we've seen in ball games, got that little bit of extra giddy up on it, and that's what that fastball did right there at 93. It's a tough pitch to lay off of. And Headley looked like that up, uppercut swing anyway, and Baker, two huge strikeouts. Now Ryan Ludwig, who brought the Padres back to within a run last night with a three-run home run, their last hope in getting this first inning run. He swings through a fastball. Strike one. Well, that ball that uh, Ludwig hit off of Alex Burnett was middle in. He really has that open stance. And he's almost like testing you. Throw that ball in there. Mauer sitting outer half of the plate. One and one. Ludwig leading the Padres in home runs and RBIs. Nine home runs, 44 RBIs. Singes the outside corner with a fastball. It's one and two. Actually, kind of fun when a guy leads off with a triple, and you're a kind of a strikeout pitcher, which Baker is. That challenge is there. So far, Baker has answered the bell. Let's see if he can get out of the ring right here. Driven to deep left center field, Revere chasing it and making the catch in the gap. Baker gives up a leadoff triple, strikes out Bartlett, strikes out Headley, and relies on Revere's speed to end the inning. First inning, and he will lead off the bottom of the first inning. Batting order brought to you by Menards, Revere, followed by Casilla, and Joe Maurer, Michael Kadire, Delman Young, Danny Valencia, Tsuyoshi Nishioka, Rene Tassoni, the designated hitter, and then Luke Hughes. Uh, Tim Stalker on the mound making his 15th start. Last face of Twins back in 2005, his rookie season, his seventh major league start. Ended up getting a no decision against the Twins at the Metrodome. The Twins ended up winning in 11 innings, 5 to 4. And uh, two pretty good last starts for uh, Tim Stauffer. 15 innings combined over his last two starts, all of them shutout innings. Over his last four starts, 2 and 1 with an ERA right at 2. Here's Revere. Belt high strike. That ball went left home plate. Speaking of Ludwig's ball, 
It was a little scary, but Revere chased it down. Well, there's a ground that a center fielder can cover, and what a nice catch. And Revere retired. Think about the catch, and I just kind of saw it from here. It looked like he caught it with the heel of his glove. Now he goes back, he knows there's going to be contact with a fence, and look at that ball stuck right in the heel of a glove. Great concentration, a great catch by Ben Revere. And a shower at the end of it with the water collected on the uh, chain link fence out there. One down, and here's Alexi Casilla. Hit to right. And to Norfia back to make the catch. Two quick outs here in the first inning. Northland Ford defense for the Padres. And they kind of wobbled their way through the early innings and it ended up costing them the ball game. Ryan Ludwig, Will Venable, Tristan Norfia in the outfield. Chase Headley, Jason Bartlett, Alberto Gonzalez, Anthony Rizzo, and Nick Huntley back behind the plate. Yeah, one thing Bud Black did mention last night that they had been playing pretty good defense. A lot of the errors they made came early over the first month and a half, but uh, last night three errors by the uh, Padre defense. Here's Joe Maurer singled in a run in his first at bat off the disabled list last night. His only hit of the ball game, and he takes strike one. Down and away, one and one. Two and one. Stoffer, 29 years old with the Padres. This is his sixth season. He missed all of the 2008 season due to right shoulder surgery. Has four pitches. He'll throw at the Twins. Fastball, curveball, slider, and a changeup. Line drive snagged by Bartlett. Power hit it on the button, and Stoffer has a one, two, three first inning. Move to the second inning, no score, and Brad Hoff will lead things off for San Diego. You know, one of the differences between the second year at Target Field and the first, last year we'd have a 30% chance of rain and it would never rain. This year we have a 30% chance of rain and it rains every night. Got done with the game last night. I don't know about you, by the time I was in my car for about five minutes, the skies opened up. Well, I live real close, so I was already in my condo when it started. Oh, is that right? Yeah. One strike to Brad Hoff. Dealing with a little bit of an elbow issue. The designated hitter tonight, and he takes down and in a ball. Hawk, 31 years old, 
Came up with the Colorado Rockies in 2004. Spent some time with the Rays last year in his first season with the Padres. Foul back. You mentioned it the other night when we've been to San Diego. We've kind of been there in June and we've kind of gone through the June gloom, which is kind of like what we've got here tonight. So the Padres should feel right at home. <laughs> Either a heavy mist or a light rain falling. Two and two. Hop, Rizzo, and Humbley for the Padres here in the second. And tonight is Cowboy Hat Giveaway Night. You've got yours on. Yes, I do. Up high, full count. I think I figured if the fans are going to wear it, I better wear it. Well, I tried to wear mine last night and I broke my headset. So I'm going to sit this one out at least through the early inning. Strikeout as Hoff goes chasing. Third strikeout for Baker already. And in tonight's game, we're participating in the home run challenge. Every home run in this game raises $20,000 for prostate cancer research. You can make a pledge by calling 800 798 Cure or go online to www.pcf.org. After 10 days, 47 home runs have been hit, and that has raised nearly a million dollars for prostate cancer research. Strike one to Rizzo. Up and away. One and one. Yeah, Rizzo just getting called up. Just 21 years old. This is his ninth major league season. Or excuse me, ninth major league game. Four hits in 25 at bats. Big swing this young man has. We saw it last night and he gives it to us there, a swing and a miss, one and two. Strikeout number four already, all swinging for Scott Baker. And most of them on that high fastball. Baker getting ahead in the count and then making him chase that pitch up. Baker having a good fastball up in that zone. The fans with the K's may want to get another one ready because Hundley is really having a tough time making contact. He struck out four times last night. He has struck out his last seven times up and nine times in his last ten at bats. And Baker delivers strike one. Swing, did he go? Strike two. Jerry Lane, the crew chief, the first base umpire, saying that he went too far. And Baker ahead in the count again, now 0 and 2. Last night they struck out Huntley on a high fastball. Not that high, but pretty close to it. Twins baseball brought to you in Sony High Definition. Got him looking. Eighth straight strikeout for Nick Hundley. And Baker has five early strikeouts.
Explore Minnesota. Visit ExploreMinnesota.com to plan your next Minnesota vacation today. The things that makes downtown Minneapolis so scenic, that's the Hennepin Avenue Bridge spanning the Mississippi River and connecting downtown Minneapolis to northeast Minneapolis and Nikolai. Here at Target Field, bottom of the second inning, no score. Michael Kanier leading things off. And he takes up high, ball one. Stauffer now with 16 shutout innings in a row, and he misses again 2 0. Yeah, he needed only seven pitches to retire the Twins in order in the first inning. Three and oh, Delman Young on deck. Stauffer pretty good control. 23 walks, three intentional, 85 innings coming into this outing. So he's usually around the plate. He has allowed only five home runs. Green lighted and he lifts it to left center field. Caught by Venable, one away. Let's go to Robbie Anthony Castle. Guys, it's about time to bring up the discussion with the Twins winning 12 of their last 14 games. The comebacks. Can they do it? Let's look at Twins history. It's some of the things that they have done and some of the best uh, deficits, biggest deficits and where they were. And you look at the Twins back in 2006, they had a great comeback. But some of the best, de biggest deficits we've seen in Major League Baseball history, they're 15, 14, 13 games. It's time to start having that discussion when you find yourself eight games out and just 10 games under 500 and the top performers, Dick and Burt, not performing to their standards they did earlier in the season. So is it possible? Of course it's possible, but we are still early, but it has happened. Joe Maurer back. The Twins hope that Jim Tomey, Jason Kubel will soon come back. Justin Morneau will come back in our span. Yeah, Glenn Perkins came back last night, pitched a good eighth inning. Young lifts it foul toward the seats and in them. Two strikes. Everything goes well for Joe Nathan down in Rochester. He may be back in that Milwaukee series. There's Denard Spam. They're hoping he might come back for that Milwaukee series. Two strikes to Young. And in the dirt, one and two. You saw on that graphic the 1978. The Yankees were so far behind the Red Sox that year. It took the Bucky Dent home run in an extra game to finally settle that division race. One and two again to Delman Young. Yeah, if you notice too on the right, it was all July and August. Right. Those were, you know, here we are on June 18th. Twins just need to find a way to get back to 500. How do you do that? Win series. Win two of three. Yeah, it'd be nice to win, you know, like they have been, 12 out of 14, but that doesn't happen too often. So enjoy the ride, but win series. Good hard breaking ball right there. Stoffer picks up his first straight strikeout. Two gone, that'll bring up Danny Valencia. Valencia got the big hit in last night's ball game for the Twins. A three run home run in that five run first inning, giving the Twins an early five nothing lead. In the dirt ball one. Well, the Twins last year won the division handily with 94 wins, and it looks like this could very well be a year where 85 wins is what you guys won the division in 1987 with, and maybe 85 wins would be enough this year. So, yeah, getting back to the 500 mark is important for the Twins because it looks like that'll put them within a game or two or three of first place. Talk to Ron Coomer about that again at the All Star break. If you can be right around 500 as a ball club and then, you know, kind of turn it on, have a great second half, you're going to find yourself hopefully in postseason. Two and one to Valencia. To deep left center field, and Valencia's got another one. Number seven for Valencia, and he puts the Twins on top, one to nothing. Well, sometimes home runs come in cycles, and uh, 
Danny Valencia, a big three-run home run in his first half bat last night. He repeats it here tonight. And with that home run hit by Danny Valencia, another $20,000 has been raised to support prostate cancer research. To make a donation, call 800-798-CURE or go online to www.pcf.org. Nishioka taps it towards short. Bartlett has it. Throws low. A very close play. Nishioka retired. And the inning is over. But Valencia hits his seventh of the year. He leads the team with 32 runs batted in. And he's given the Twins a 1 0 lead. To Danny Valencia's bomb here in the second inning. Danny's been on fire, hit one yesterday. But today, another story, even though it's rainy here today, so far it's been pretty sunny in Scotty Baker's world. He's been throwing the ball very well, and guys, to me, Scotty, when he can establish his fastball down and then elevate it like that one, he gets a lot of high fly ball outs or punch outs. He's got five punch outs already. That fly out is very typical of Scotty Baker. This ballpark has been tailor-made for his way of pitching. Will Venable on the first pitch pops it up to Michael Kadire. Just the third ball put in play against Baker in two and a third inning. Well, you know, in Scott Baker, you look at his track record, and he's always kind of a slow starter in April or May, and then June, July, August, September usually takes off pretty good. Since June 1st, when he first came up, he is 45 and 28. Over the last four months of the season. So his best pitching is yet to come for Scott Baker. Coming off that great start, his last start against the Rangers. We've talked about it with, with regard to Nick Blackburn and Scott Baker as well. Ooh, that sails up against the screen of the San Diego dugout. It's hard to get optimum results from a pitcher when they're not feeling well 100%. See the bat flying out of the hands of Gonzalez. But Baker last year had some elbow issues and, and he didn't pitch as well as Rick Anderson or he would have liked. Foul tip. Mauer can't hang on. Still one and two. Well, when you go into the season, what you look out of Scott Baker is give me 200 plus innings and he's usually going to win between 13 and 16 ball games. He won 12 ball games last year, 15 games in 2009 when he did. Pitch 200 innings. Last year, only 170 and 29 starts because of the elbow irritation. One and two. Another strikeout, number six for Baker. Five of them swinging strikeouts, two away in the third. Twins and Padres will close out the homestand tomorrow, and the first 5,000 male have to be a man, could be a boy. We get a Father's Day gift from Pepsi and the Twins, a driver's cap. Be the first in your neighborhood to be this fashionable. Limit, uh, limited tickets are available. 
for Sunday's game. So call 800. And uh, instead of wearing the uh, cowboy hat that you're wearing, I think I'll wear my driver's hat. I was going to wear that tomorrow because that's what they're giving out tomorrow. Yeah, so but we're cowboy hats tonight. We're promoting this for tomorrow. We sure are. Put it on. And you had it on backwards, which I kind of like the look the other night with the TC showing. Very nice. Playing golf this winter with it on backwards, just like that. Really. Denorfia with a 1 0 count. And a hot ground ball up the middle. He's got both hits against Scott Baker. Uh, speaking of cowboy hats, and we know the bullpen for the Twins, they they just try to get in with everybody else. And you can see them coming out of the dugout with their cowboy hats as they find a way to get out to the bullpen. There they are. Jim Holy says, Howdy, partner. So now which do you prefer? Do you prefer the cowboy hat or the driver's hat? I actually like the cowboy hat, but actually you look better in that than you did the cowboy hat. <laughs> well, I'm not sure there's a compliment in there, but <laughs> there if, there, if, if there, no, there isn't. <laughs> Ball one. Bartlett struck out in the key spot. He came up. He was the first guy to come up. The runner at third, nobody out at the time, and he did not get the job done chasing a high fastball. One thing Baker had in his last start two against the Rangers not only a good fastball with the seven strikeouts also kept that breaking ball down very nicely good breaking ball right there also mixes in that circle change up one and one the Martin Papa Rick watching bouncer to third it rolls to Valencia who throws him out. 11 pitches and a score is third. And the Twins still have a one on the lead. Click on to circle me, Burton. You might find yourself, or excuse me, uh, submit an email on why your sign should be circled on an upcoming home game and have a chance to visit us up here in the booth. We'll reveal two sections the morning before each game. One will be listed on FoxSportNorth.com and the other on KFAN.com. And you can wear whatever hat you want yes, if you come you up can. here to the booth. Yes, you can. <laughs> To Sony, lashes one to center field. He's aboard with a leadoff hit here in the third. So to Sony getting the start as a designated hitter, and he gets a designated hit right away. Yeah, just reaching out over the plate, good solid swing, making good contact right back up the middle. So to Sony's aboard, Luke Hughes. 
the first baseman tonight and the number nine hitter. Strike on the outside corner. Breaking ball misses. One and one. The home run by Valencia broke Stoffer's scoreless inning streak, but again, 15 innings coming into the game and Tell you everything you need to know about how things are going for the Padres. They won a two nothing ball game and lost a two nothing ball game. Here's a little dribbler up That's the line. Going to be a tough play for Headley, and he has no play. An infield hit for Luke Hughes. And the eight and nine hitters have started a rally for the Twins. Ron Coomer, what makes Ben Revere so effective as a leadoff batter? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, as you've said many times so far. He's been unbelievably exciting since he's been injected in the lineup. But the swing has changed for him, Dick. And his hands have stayed above the baseball, and he drives down to the ball. And here in the last few weeks, we see a lot of those balls being hit the other way. This is a pitch up in the zone that he gets his hands up above the baseball and drives down to the ball. Both of those have been successful. Even yesterday, the pitch inside that he inside out and over the shortstop's head just lets you know that he's really working hard at trying to be above the baseball and hit it down and also hit it the other way. All they need is one little hiccup and he's on base. He's really changed his game um, here in the last, oh, probably three weeks that I've seen in his mechanical way of going about hitting, not pulling the ball very often and getting the job done big time. Now he's going to try to get on top of the ball with a bunt. He missed on the first one, one strike. Yeah, kind of jabbed at it right there. What Ben Revere wants to do is bunt it toward Headley, the third baseman. Make him come in. He's already sneaking in from third base. And now bunted foul, two strikes. See, and the big key right here is if you're going to bunt, especially for sacrifice burden, when you want to bunt it at the third baseman, you really got to commit early. And just try to bunt it at him because if you get the ball at the third baseman, make him field it, you only got one play, and that's the first base, and you've done your job. You got to commit early with the sacrifice bunt. And well, two strikes now. You wonder if the bunt is still on or they're going to let him swing away. Two strikes to Revere. Probably swing away. And he takes down and in. Well, in the first two bunt attempts, and with Headley. 60 feet away from home plate as the pitch is being delivered. Same for Rizzo. I mean, there is no element of surprise, so you may as well, as Ron Toomer says, give it away early. Now one and two. Strikeout. Out number one here in the third inning. Stoffer picking up his second strikeout. It's a big one with a couple runners on first and second with nobody out. So Revere unable to advance the runners. And Revere's 10th strikeout in 94 at bats. Here's Casilla trying to pick up his teammate up. Strike on the outside corner. Well, we have the uh, roadie reunion here. Up, uh, they are out here to uh, celebrate Circle Me Bert. And congratulations, welcome to the game. Enjoy the game up here. Casilla hooks it foul by about two feet. Casilla waited on the off-speed pitch and just hooked it foul. Two strikes now to Casillo with Stoffer trying to pitch his way out of a jam here in the third. Sony checked at second, Hughes is at first.
bobbled by Rizzo. One out there and no chance for a double play. First and third with two away, bringing Mauer to the plate. July baseball's biggest stars will gather in Phoenix for the 2011 Major League Baseball All Star Game. Coverage beginning Tuesday, July 12th, live from Phoenix at 7 o'clock Central, only on Fox. First and third, two down. Mauer at the plate, hit the ball hard, hit a liner to Bartlett to close out the first inning. Yeah, even in yesterday's ball game, Joe Mauer got the base hit up the middle for the RBI. Later in the ball game, he hit the ball sharply, but right at Bartlett to hit into a double play. So he's making good contact. Now let's see if he can find a hole right here. Ball one. Earlier, the Padres wasted a leadoff triple, and now the Twins in danger of missing this opportunity with a pair of singles to start the inning. And he takes a strike, one and one. To Sony is at third. And to see it at first. See it with 10 stolen bases on the year and 13 attempts. Nice block by Hundley. That ball landed at Mauer's feet and he was able to make the catch. Two and one. Three straight breaking balls so far. This one down and in. And Hundley has to get in front of it, play the hop, and went right into his glove. He's thrown out 21% of base dealers. Mauer taps it foul, two and two. Like another breaking ball down and in, and Joe fouled it off. So nothing but breaking balls to Joe Mauer in this at bat. Last night, Maurer drove in the first run of the game. Here, he'd like to drive in the second run of tonight's game. Stoffer stepped toward third. Could see a shuffle toward second, but didn't commit. Two and two to Maurer. And a bouncer right side. Gonzalez has it, and the threat ends with two runners left on. We head to the fourth inning. It's one nothing win.
short code 234 234. Yeah, it's got bigger been pretty sharp here. Bunch of strikeouts and a one nothing lead, and he's leading the voting so far. Yeah, 40 pitches, 30 for strikes for Scott Baker. Six strikeouts so far in the ball game. Chase Headley will lead things off on the fourth for San Diego. Headley, Ludwig, and a hop to face Scott Baker. Off speed pitch over for a strike. Headley went down swinging. His first time up, and he too left the runner at third with less than two out. He became the second out of the inning, and then Baker got Ludwig on a deep fly to center to end the threat. Two strikes. Down and in, one and two. Change their eye level. That's what Scott Baker does with that pitch right there. Now Headley struck out on a high fastball. Two, two, two pitches down in the zone. Got him looking. A straight change and it throws Headley for an opening strikeout here in the fourth. Yeah, I think Headley thought that was a little bit on the high side, but Baker picking up his seventh strikeout. Just like a little cutter right there. Seven strikeouts, five swinging, two looking, one away, and here's Ludwig. Guys, I got a question, you know, especially for Bert. When you when you were pitching Bert, I know. We're watching Scott Baker change the eye level with his fastball and then mixing his breaking pitch. To me, it's real effective for him because he ends up finishing guys off up in the zone and punching guys out. To me, it was always difficult when a guy did that. When you were a starting pitcher for all these years, did you try to do that and throw some little fastballs and then elevate some just to give, because obviously it would give your curveball even that much more effect um, to the hitter? Well, what I tried to do with my fastball is pitch more inside with my fastball because that's where my curveball started. But uh, you know Baker, I think what he does, he's normally up in the strike zone. But if he can do what he's doing so far, I mean that that last pitch, good pitch to Ludwig down in the strike zone. Previous pitch the curveball down. Now you might change his eye level by trying to put a little extra on that fastball. And another breaking ball, and Baker picks up his eighth strikeout. Oh, he's mixing in all his pitches. You start looking for that fastball, and then the tight rotation, and Ludwig goes down swinging. TNT trivia with two gone in the fourth inning. We nailed the one last night, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Besides Tony Gwynn, who was the only other Padre to win a batting title. Hawk takes up high ball one. Well, Tony Gwynn won eight of them, if I remember right. Right. Not? Yeah. yeah. One more than Rock Crew. Mm -hmm. Just off the outside corner, and it's two and zero. Oh. Baker struck out the side in the second, getting Hawk first, then Rizzo and Huntley. Uh, they try to. Get Hoff and pick up his ninth strikeout through four innings. Three and oh. Three and one. First baseman shifted to right field to give more playing time for Rizzo, and then the Padres designated Jorge Cantu for assignment. Foul three and two. Yeah, Hop does bring some power to a, a ball club that needs some power. Signing as a free agent over the winter, 124 career home runs at the major league level. Full count to Brad Hoff. 
foul back. Baker trying to pick up his fifth win of the year. Trying to keep the Twins on a nice roll here. Chance to win the series tonight. They can win the ball game. Flip foul. Off stays alive. The best stories start here by AT&T and by Comcast. Call Comcast Business Class at 800-391-3000 to turn your business into a fast business. Michael Kadire leading off the bottom of the fourth. He's just taking a high fastball for ball one. He checks his swing. No, he doesn't. It's one on one. Kadir Young and Valencia, four, five, and six hitters, all right handed hitters against Tim, Hall, Tim Stauffer. One and two. Yeah, right handers hitting 232 coming into the ballgame off of Stauffer. Left handers hitting 317. Came in in a game making in his first 14 starts, allowed only five home runs. Three to right handers, two to left handers, but Danny Valencia. Made it a one nothing ball game with his home run. Two and two. Kadair seemingly every night raising his batting average to three points. Has it up in the 280s now, right at 280 prior to this at bat after being retired his first time up. A little roller to the right side. Gonzalez flips to first. Anthony Rizzo with the catch one away. Here's our window concept window of opportunity involving Delvin Young and the torrid hitting he's done in interleague play. Yeah, he's uh, really done well hitting 343 in interleague play. Delvin Young's first year with the Rays back in 2006 in his sixth season at the major league level. Young went down swinging his first time up.
breaking ball that covers the inside corner. Driven deep to center field. And off the glove of Venable. Young will go to second. A slicing line drive that almost cleared the head of Venable. It hit him in the glove and bounced out. Well, Venable kind of shaking his head right there. I think he thought he should have caught this ball. Delman getting a breaking ball up and hitting it sharply. And then watching Venable. You know, drop the ball right there. Would have been a double the whole way. Venerable right off the tip of the glove gets Delman Young credited with a double. It'll be his seventh double of the year, and he gets into scoring position with one out. And now Valencia, who hit his seventh home run of the year, his first time up. Strike on the outside corner. Hey Ron Coomer, Danny Valencia, his home run prior to last night was you have to go back to May 21st in Arizona. He went through 23 games without hitting a home run. All of a sudden he hit a three run last night. First at bat here. The young kid sometimes finds that groove. Yeah, that for sure. And confidence plays into it. But the other thing, Bert, is with Danny, of all hitters that we have, when you watch him as the pitcher is getting set, he has a lot of movement with his hands. So he, they move up and down, they move side to side, he gets a lot of movement. And to me, there are times where he doesn't get his front foot down and get the movement done and completed before he's ready to fire. And he ends up being either a little late or trying to recreate some bat speed. So when he gets a, his timing down with some of the movements with his hands, then he can really pound the baseball. He just has some issues with the movement, that's all. One and one to Valencia. That's one and two. I mean, we remember Gary Sheffield. I mean, all the movement he had with his bat. But, you know, everything, Ron, you, there's so many things you can do up there. I mean, is that a timing mechanism for Danny Valencia to, you know, do that little bit of bat movement? And then, you know, even the, the, the leg kick of the left leg coming, the knee coming up. Yeah, it's definitely a timing thing. Like, Chef would do all that pre pitch. But by the time he was recognizing the pitch, his hands were set and loaded. That's the big difference. Same thing with a guy like Kirby Puckett. Puck had the big leg kick and he had a lot of movement with his hands. But as the pitcher got set, Puck was in a position to fire from. And I think that's the one thing as a young hitter, when you have all this movement, you haven't quite figured out exactly how you want to get this done. And that's why you have a little bit of the ups and downs that Danny's seeing right now. Boy, he took a pitch right down the middle of the plate. After a couple, couple pitches hard in, and then Stoffer ends up picking up his third strikeout, his first call third strikeout. Cut the plate in half. Mm -hmm. Two down. Young still at second. And now Nishioka. Nishioka bounced to short to end the second inning. Outside ball one. Delman Young at second base, trying to get a pretty good lead because the outfield, especially center and left, playing pretty shallow. Swing and a miss. Change up right there, Nishioka, way out front. There's a defense right there, Nishioka, not known to hit, you know power yet. And, you know there. Delman's going to try to get a good lead because a little base hit flare in the left field could be a play at home plate. Lifted foul into the seats. One and two. Stoffers pitched well, but again, no run support to speak of. None tonight. Scott Baker pitching very well. Yeah, because of that man right there, Scott Baker. And the staff in general showed you the graphic at the beginning. The last 14 ball games, the starters combined an ERA at 1.87. One and two to Nishioka. Another nice block by Hundley.
Two and two. Nishioka. Breaking ball got him. Clocked at 77 miles per hour. And Nishioka thought it was high, but the inning ends. We move to the fifth in a one nothing game. Target field. The rain stopped just in time. We're underway into the fifth inning. Ron Coomer, Robbie Ansmikowski, Burke Lanovan, and Dick Bramer with Anthony Rizzo in the box ready to start the Padre fifth inning. Swing and a foul before we get too far along. I've got to pass along birthday wishes to my son Eric, 16 years old today. Uh oh. That means he can legally drive. Not yet. He hasn't taken the test yet. Foul back to strike. You have to take a test to drive in 16? <laughs> in Minnesota, you do. Oh, yeah. you do? California, you don't? No, heavens no. If you're 16, you can go anywhere. Dad, give me the keys. I'll be back Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Just outside, one and two. Rizzo, Hundley, and Venable in the San Diego fifth. Mike Baker trying to hit that outside corner, but missed again. Full count. No walks for Baker, just a couple of hits, and they both come off the bat of Chris Denorfia. Eight strikeouts in the game. Baker had a season high nine strikeouts back in April in Baltimore against the Orioles. Baker way over on the first base side of the pitching rubber. Misses again. So he went 0 and 2 on Rizzo and then missed four straight times. Put him aboard with a leadoff walk. Sanford Health injury report: Carl Crawford with a strained left hamstring left the game on the disabled list today. Kevin Euclid with uh, an upset stomach. The Twins went through that. The Tampa Bay Rays went through that. A lot of baseball teams affected by the stomach flu. Well, there's a team that started off the season poorly. The Boston Red Sox. Now they're. They've won nine out of their last ten ball games, currently on a three-game winning streak. 
Crawford started off the season poorly. He's picked it up, but now onto the Sable list. Strike at the knees to Hundley, who again has struck out eight straight times and ten times in his last 11 at bat. Right, he just wants to make contact right here. Let's see if he can make contact to a shortstop or second baseman. A little two hopper. Yeah. Baker's been able to get seven double plays turned behind him. Matt Laporta also put on the disabled list by the Indians today. Twisting his ankle. A little run down. Tapper foul, two strikes. There's only been one ground ball out so far for Baker, and that was Jason Bartlett to end the third inning. Well, the other way to look at it, there's only been three fly ball out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A lot of strikeouts. <laughs> Two strikes. To Nick Hundley. Nice stop by Hughes. Gets the lead runner. There'll be no return throw. That's a nice play by Luke Hughes, spearing that one hop smash to the right side. Yeah, that could have been trouble right there. Hundley finally makes contact. He has to reach out over the plate and hit it toward right field. And Hughes coming off the bag after holding on the runner, Rizzo, diving to his right, comes up with it and gets the lead run of Rizzo at second base. No throw as Nishioka gets out of the way. The sliding Rizzo. Watch Nishioka right there get out of the way. So similar to the slide that Nick Swisher put on him to broke his leg when he was a second baseman. This time he could see the slide coming. Here's Will Venable. And over for a strike. And Baker trying to pitch around the leadoff walk here in the fifth. Baker doing a pretty good job getting first pitch strikes 11 of 17. On the outside corner 0 and 2. Two strikes to the Padre center fielder. One and two. Venerable signed by the Padres in 2005 out of Princeton University. In his fourth season with the Padres. Skip through the infield. Huntley to second. He'll hold up. And Venable with the base hit, sending Huntley to second base with one away. And before Gonzalez digs in, when single game sweeps have been a very popular feature of Target Field again this year. Got a chance to spend the 4th of July here in one of those suites, spend America's birthday enjoying America's pastime. 833 Twins it is the number to call to get more info. On single game sweet hot. Here's Gonzalez struck out his first time up. Stints on the disabled list with the Padres this year. 
one and one. So if Hudson plays second, of course that impacts Gonzalez and his playing time. One and one to Gonzalez. Popped up. Very short right field. In fact, Casillo wants it. Now this Kadir will make the call and catch out number two. And Orlando <laughs> Hudson. Wayne Hadaway. Wayne Hadaway. We all know Orlando Hudson. He loves to talk. He's friends with everybody. Even Wayne Hathaway. Mm -hmm. Two gone in the fifth. Here's Kristen Orfeo. A triple to start the ball game, but was left at third. And he got a base hit in the third inning with two outs and was left at first. Up high, ball one. Runner is Hundley. He's at second base. Go ahead, runner is Venable at first. And there's a strike. Came right back with another breaking ball. Missed with strike ball one. 18 pitches so far for Baker, the most he's made it in an inning. 75 total, 52 for strikes. One and one. Blocked by Mauer. Two and one. Baker kind of worked his way into a jam here with a leadoff walk. Rizzo. Took a free pass after falling behind in the count 0 and 2. 2 and 1. San Diego's leadoff battle. Now 3 and 1 with Bartlett on deck. Lifted to right field. Kadire retreats a couple of steps. Threat over. And the Twins still have a 1 0 lead.
Minnesota State Lottery tickets that I have for Marge here, Bert. She is 70 years old today, or 70 years young, I should say, with the way you look right now, Marge. And she made the trip down from Fargo, North Dakota, second trip to Target Field. Marge, you have been circled by Bert on your 70th birthday. What are your thoughts on that? I cannot believe it. You cannot be and you're wearing the cowboy hat. I you look better in that hat than Bert does. You know that? I hope so. He's wearing it now. So. I, can't, I can't believe that, though. Any message you have for Bert? Uh, congratulations, Bert. You were phenomenal when we watched you in the past. And have a great, great day. There you well, go, Bert. Thank you, young lady, right over here. She's sitting right here, Robbie. Say hello. Tell her happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday to you, young lady. You are here by circle. One strike to Renee Tassoni. Now a ball one and one. Tassoni let off the third with a single. Not as far as third base. Twins didn't score. That's really the only threat that they've had. They got the Young's one out double, but he never budged from second base. The only run they scored came back in the second inning on Valencia's home run. Inside two and one. Uh, Tassoni. Getting a chance to get some at bats as the designated hitter. He'll be followed by Hughes and then Ben Revere. Full foul. Indians in about the same part of their ball game. They're leading Pittsburgh two to nothing at home. And the Tigers, the other first place team in the division, in the second inning scoreless with the Rockies in Denver. Backhanded by Bartlett. Perfect throw across the diamond, one away. You can take the Twins with you wherever you go this season. Subscribe to MLB.tv today and see every Twins game live or on demand on your computer and your favorite devices. Visit TwinsBaseball.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. In market blackout rules apply. So one gone, and here's Luke Hughes. There's a strike. One and one. Well, the Padres do not score a lot of runs, and if you're a Padres starter, you have to put zeros on the board. That's what Stouffer's been able to do after that home run by Danny Valencia. You mentioned last night they've been shut out 11 times already this year. It's once a week, roughly. Bartlett will get another chance. Two down. Base is empty. Ben Revere at the plate. And what we've discovered since he's been recalled, if it's hit in the air to center field, He's probably going to catch it. Well, a week ago on Saturday, he made that great catch. And last night's ball game, even though David or Bob Davidson, the third base umpire, said it wasn't a catch, it was a catch. And then earlier in this ball game, made a great catch right there to take Baker out of that first inning. Two down here in the fifth. Revere tried to bunt in the third twice, had two strikes, and ended up you know, striking out. And then he did try to bunt for a base hit and was retired in the first inning. Up and away ball one. A pop up left center field. And it's a one, two, three, fifth with Ludwig coming in to make the catch on to the thing. Still one to nothing.
race again tomorrow at Target Field. Nice day for some baseball. We're just talking clouds and sunshine. Nice and comfortable too with your first pitch temperature right at 75 degrees. That's like a perfect day here tomorrow for the last day of this homestand. Hey, I want to circle this group right here. A bunch of soccer players from Holland uh, in the United States here to play in Eden Prairie. They're just here for a couple days and then they're going to Washington and then if they win there they're going to go to New York and play some soccer. A lot of Dutch Dutch people here tonight. A chance to beat them before the ball game. Now you didn't play much soccer growing up in California, did you? Uh, no, not at all. Not at all. Got right into baseball as soon as uh, my dad introduced me to it. One strike to Bartlett, leading off the sixth. Two strikes now to Bartlett. Baker had to struggle to get through the fifth inning. Would we'll like an easier time of it here on the sixth. Two, three, and four batters. Bartlett, Headley, and Ludwig lined up to face him. A fastball and a foul to the screen. Effort right there by Luke Hughes. Well, the ball kept slicing away. Good effort. Luke Hughes coming up short. See, Herbeck did that last year in the old timers game and tore up about yeah, but 15 stuck. square feet of side. He's stuck in the earth. Two strikes. This one playable for Casilla. Bartlett taking care of one away. A carsoup.com forward slash baseball question from John Pazler, Marine on the St. Croix. How many games in a row has the twin starter gone at least five innings? Bono did. Mariano did. Blackburn did. Dunsing, Baker. I think you have to go back to uh, Dunsing's start. That two inning start against the Rangers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Strike one on the outside corner to Headley. We got four hits last night, but Baker has struck him out twice tonight. Ishioka behind the bag. Two down. Twins lost all three games in Detroit, finishing that series on June 1st. Look what's happened since. Yeah, again, Twins have won 12 of 14 ball games. Starting staff has been outstanding. Great combined earned run average. Not a lot of walks. Picking up some strikeouts. Two down on the six. Yeah, Rick Anderson can afford himself a smile. Makes pop smile yeah. right there. You know, it's the same guys. We we talked about this before. Swarzak's been in and out a few times in the rotation, but for the most part, same guys that struggled through the first two months, and now you get to the third month and. Uh, every night they're giving their team a very good start. You know, throughout the year you'll see two or three, maybe three of the five guys on a pretty good roll, but right now all five guys. Dunsing struggled a little bit last night, but he was able to get through six innings and only allowed two runs, another quality start. But in a, in a sense, aren't those games the most important when you don't have your best stuff and you still find a way to just give up a couple runs in six innings? Good fastball right there by Baker. Yeah, Dick, I mean, you know, you. Uh, you want to keep your club in the game, and, and Dunsing did that. He got some early run support, and then he is able to go six innings. Two and zero. Oh. And Ludwig thought he was going to get a fastball, but he didn't. Well, he struck him out last time on that breaking ball that Ludwig swung through. So Baker, with eight strikeouts in the ball game, has not struck out a batter since the fourth inning. Let's go. What's wrong with Scott Baker? Ball strike, two and two. And another good breaking ball. This will be his 90th pitch of the evening. That's 
to center. But Revere is there to end the inning. 12 pitches in the sixth. And the Padres go down 1, 2, 3. Talking about Scott Baker going up the ladder for a strikeout right there of Headley in the first inning, and then going down the ladder, changing the eyesight of that hitter. And that being Ludwig, the strikeout victim in the fourth inning. The Frost Group Coors Light Freeze Camp. See, I wish I had known that term when I was in high school. My high school coach, Jerry Reaver, was always concerned about my throws from short over to first. And I could have used that term. I was just trying to change the eye level of the first baseman. <laughs> one was high, one was low. You see a bunch and takes ball one. To see a Mauer and Kadire in the twin six. At the knees, one and one. Well, not a lot of hits in this ball game. The Twins with four hits, the biggest, the home run by Danny Valencia. The Padres with only three and six shutout innings by Baker. Check his swing, and it's two and one. That's his home run. The difference in this ball game. But back to the mound and Stoffer has an easy play, one down. And that'll bring up Joe Mauer. Time for our in-game box score brought to you by Pepsi Max. Well, the Twins again with only four hits, and it's uh, Danny Valencia right here. Now that's the big blow in this ball game, a one-nothing ball game, with his seventh home run of the year, and back-to-back -back days for home runs for Danny Valencia. Hour with a liner to short and a tapper to second. One for six since returning to the active roster. A little bit low, ball one. On his last at bat with a runner at second base, Stoffer threw him nothing but breaking balls. Finally, Joe hit that ground ball to second base. There he starts him off with a fastball away, but misses low. Another fastball misses. 2 and 0. And a strike. Stoffer on the year, two wins, four losses. Very good, 3.28 earned run average, making his 15th start.
three and one. Can I on deck? Probably been many times in your career where Stoffer is now. You seemingly can't get any runs, and you're pitching for a team that's dreadful at scoring runs. And you feel like you got to pitch a shutout every time out. You know, you know what? And there's nothing wrong with that. It'll just make them better if the Padres ever get some offense. You know, it'll make him a better pitcher. Three one pitch, tap the second, two down. And that'll bring up Kadir. Arby's and Fox Sports North are giving you a chance to win a trip for two to Fort Myers, Florida. Pick up an Arby's It's Good Mood Food code card every Friday at any participating Arby's and log on to FoxSportsNorth.com. Click on the Fan Zone tab, enter the code for the chance to win. To enter, you must be a member of the Fan Zone. That's easy, it's free to join, but you got to be 18 or older. Visit FoxSportsNorth.com for more details. Kadir down the right field line and deep to the corner. Chased by DeNorfia. Does not make the play. And Kadir will go to second. Another ball that could have been caught. And DeNorfia seemed as interested in the wall as he was the baseball. Well, might have lost a flight of a ball, but he got over there and then just unable to put the ball in his glove. Kadir, that ball slicing away from him. He's looking where he's at. And then. He thought he caught that ball, but watch his reaction. Ball just out of reach. It'll be a double for Kadir. And he gets at second base with two outs. In the fourth inning, Young hit one hard to center field, and Venable went back and had the ball bounce out of his glove for a double. Trying to take advantage of an extra out here and a gift extra base hit. Foul off the foot of the catcher, Hundley. One strike to Young. And off the end of the bat foul, that time the second baseman yeah. Gonzalez went to the bag and Kanaya retreated and Stoffer went home. Well, you want to step off if you're a pitcher, but Stoffer looked back and then all of a sudden Gonzalez looked when Stoffer was looking home. Yeah, left a big hole at second base, but Roman fouled it off. Oh and two. Very high. Rockies have scored three in the bottom of the second against Detroit. Three nothing Rockies. One and two to Delman Young. Right down the middle. The Stoffer continues to impress. We head to the seventh in a one nothing game.
with Danny Valencia in back to back games hitting a home run. This one a solo home run. That gave the Twins a 1 0 lead, and Scott Baker's been able to keep it at a 1 0 ball game. Six shutout innings. He's allowed only three hits with eight strikeouts for Baker. Brad Hopp will lead things off in the seventh against Baker. Very nice. You are all here by circle. One big family, one big purpose. Hop, Rizzo, and Hundley here in the San Diego seventh inning. Check swing and ball one. Padres have their work cut out for them. They fall in 11. Games below the 500 mark and nine and a half games behind the Giants. Missing inside 2 0. The Twins can help them out a little bit because after tomorrow's game, there's an off day on Monday. Monday night, we fly to San Francisco to start a series against the Giants Tuesday night. 2 and 1. And that staggers Mauer. Kind of taking a little extra time, allowing Joe Maurer to kind of. Looks like I think Hop's uh, elbow bothering him a little bit too by that swing. Yeah, he uh, set out some time because of the elbow. He is in the DH spot in part because of the sore elbow. Two and one. Swing and a miss. And that I think is the big difference between uh, National League teams playing by American League rules and what we'll be going through next year and what Ron Gardenhire will have to go through uh, next week playing by National League rules. The DH can be a luxury for a National League manager who's got a player a little dinged up like Hop, and he strikes out and it might be that his elbow is really Affecting him, but Bud Black can at least have let him take his swings without asking him to throw. Right. And Baker picking up his ninth strikeout. TNT trivia question. I hadn't really thought uh, much about it. What about Dave Winfield? Did he win a batting title with the Padres? Oh boy, I don't know. Gary Sheffield. Gary Sheffield. And both Sheffield. That's who I would have guessed. Gary Sheffield and Dave Winfield. Mm -hmm. Their last names so similar that. Uh, with a little imagination, you can say we got the uh, answer correct. I understand Dave Winfield is here this weekend. We hope to either visit with him later tonight or tomorrow. 2 0 to Anthony Rizzo. That's a foul. This is not good if you're a San Diego Padre fan because they're last in the American League in average, or excuse me, National League. Fewest home runs. Don't score a lot of runs. So you end up, if you're Tim Stauffer, with a lot of games like this. Mm -hmm. In his last game, he had seven shutout innings, wasn't involved in the decision, and the Padres lost the game two to nothing. Also, have hit the uh, fewest doubles in the National League, too, so not a lot of extra base hits for Bud Black and his troops. Two and two. And another strikeout for Baker. And strikeout number 10, a season high for Baker in strikeouts. That'll bring up Huntley. A good heartbreaking ball right here. Breaking ball. Box tracks brought to you by Carrier. In the second inning, Baker struck out Pop and Rizzo and then got Hundley on strikes. He'll try to do the same thing here in the seventh. And that's a bunk foul on strike. So Hundley, who broke a string of eight straight strikeouts by grounding out to Luke Hughes in the fifth. Trying to bunt his way aboard here in the seventh. I mentioned in the uh, open on my scouting report, Baker making his 16th interleague start. He's eight and four 
in interleague play. And 1 0 against the Padres. He beat the Padres back in 2008 in San Diego 4 to 3. His career high in strikeouts 12. That came up last year against the Colorado Rockies. Strike two. Baker ready to throw his 103rd pitch. Side Kadir coming in. Eight in a row sent down by Baker. Seven shutout innings. It's time for the seventh inning stretch. Brought to you by Medica. Now you can get 20 crispy McNuggets for just $4.99 at McDonald's. By Century Link, Quest is becoming Century Link. Century Link, your link begins here. Find out more at CenturyLink.com slash link. And by Goldman Sachs, for all the reasons you invest. Mutual funds from Goldman Sachs. Quite a few uh, runs scored last night in a cloudy, hazy, misty evening here at Target Field. Just one run on the board tonight. He came off the bat of Danny Valencia. He had a home run his first time up back in the second inning. He'll lead off the seventh again against Tim Stafford. Ball one to Valencia, and we'll see how the Padres work Valencia. They have, uh, tried to go after him now with pitches inside off the plate and then getting strikes away. 2 0. Oh. Stoffer hasn't walked a man. I think he's pitched an outstanding ball game, and he's given up five hits, but really the two doubles by Kadire and Young, two balls that may have been able to. Be caught. Right. To Sony with a sharp single to center leading off the third. And then Luke Hughes with the infield right. kind of swinging bunt down the third baseline. And Ballsley, the pitching coach, on the phone. 3 0 oh to Valencia leading off the seventh. And a strike. 3 and 1. Danny in last night's ball game got a fastball and hit that three run home run, got a fastball earlier. And hit the home run to make it a one nothing game. And 
Valencia. Shoulders sag a little bit. He thought again it was ball four. That's a good pitch right there. Brian Knight behind the plate. He's been pretty uh, generous with the strike zone, but that's a good pitch. And if he's going to walk around like that, you better be swinging the bat right here. Two hopper to short. Bartlett has an easy play. One down. Nevertheless, Valencia has provided a couple of home runs. Our tour is like full hard blast. Yeah, both of them coming in his first at bat. That a three run home run in last night's ball game. That gave a 5 0 lead to the Twins. And here tonight, the Twins have a 1 0 lead thanks to Danny Valencia's home run. 23 games between home runs, and he hit a three run last night and then one them here tonight. Ishioko in the strike. Valencia not happy with the strikes that were called, and then Kadir trying to get between him and the home plate umpire, not to shield the the. Uh, the uh, sound wave so much as the vision of the home plate umpire. Well, you know the dugouts are so close yeah. there. If you yell a little bit too loud, believe me, these umpires they they can hear. Nishioka hit by a pitch and he'll take first base. So Nishioka and his speed aboard with one gone in the seventh. The Sixteen greatest moments in the All Star game are going head to head to determine which is the most memorable of all time. Go to MLB.com slash moments. Vote now for your favorite midsummer classic and tune in to the All Star Game Tuesday, July 12th at 7 o'clock Central on Fox. Find out who won. What's your favorite All Star memory? Now, you played oh, in a couple of them. No, you know what? I saw the one in 89 when uh, Bo Jackson let off that ball game with a home run, followed by a home run by Wade Boggs. Right. I, I saw that, you know, in person. I thought that was a pretty cool game. I don't remember the uh, result of it, but I like the way the game started off with a couple home runs for the American League. Siyoshi Nishioka aboard to Sony the hitter. I have to rank Tory Hunter's catch on yeah. Barry Bonds. Uh, my family and I were at that game in Milwaukee. That was a, a great memory. Seattle Cal Ripken Homer in his last All-Star game. That was a special memory. They pitch out and Nishioki's a dead duck. So they expected he would take off. He did, and he's thrown out two away. Yeah, get thrown out for the first time. He had one stolen base earlier this year and then broke his leg. And right here takes off a pitch out. Hunley's throw right on the mark. And Jason Bartlett keep that ball in the glove. To Sony with a 2 0 count, and he lifts it high to center field. Venable with the catch, and the Twins are gone in the seventh. Out of the eighth, and it's still 1 to nothing.
drinks to benefit those serving our country. Hanging with the Majors was hosted by Joe and Lisa Nathan. They helped raise money for the Minnesota Military Families Association. There was a dinner, pictures, and an auction, all part of the Twins' Hope Week. And to find out how you can volunteer in your community, visit the North Sports Supports page at foxsportsnorth.com or call 612-340-7440. Will Venable leading off the eighth against Scott Baker. Yeah, Baker out there to start the eighth inning. That's his 105th pitch. So Baker went into the dugout. They asked if he was okay. He said, I'm fine. 112 pitches in that uh, complete game in his last start on Saturday. So it's been a week between starts for Baker. Had the off day on Monday and then the rain out. But, uh, you know, within the total of 106 pitches now, 73 strikes. And that has as much to do with him being out there as anything else. He's thrown strikes. He's had some quick outs. Matters to put the ball in play right away because he's been throwing. Well, strikes. I think we know Scott Baker making his 152nd Major League start, some action in the bullpen, but he's always been throwing strikes. A guy that doesn't walk many batters, always around the plate. Two and one to Venable, be followed by Gonzalez and then Denorfia. Nice fastball. Boy, you look at this Padre team, and we mentioned earlier coming into the game with 583 strikeouts leading the major leagues. And boy, to a man, they all seem to have a tough time laying off that high fastball. I'm going to be honest with you, Dick. If I'm a pitcher, I'm going to want to throw against this ball club. They're not a very good ball club. Just off the corner. Well, it looked like Brian Knight, the home plate umpire, almost wanted to ring him up. A little backdoor breaking ball right here. Outside. Full count to the leadoff man here in the eighth. Bounce to the right side. And it bleeds through past Hughes and past Casilla. Venables aboard with a leadoff single. And we'll see if that leads to a pitching change. Well, Scott Baker here tonight. He started off with five strikeouts in the first two innings. A season high strike, 10 strikeouts for Scott Baker in the ball game. So many times managers will not allow a starter to beat himself in the eighth inning after a, if it's a one run game, the leadoff man gets on. But I think the nature of the hit. It was just a 3 4 hopper through the infield as much as anything else has kept Baker in the game here in the eighth. Well, he's given up only four hits two to uh, Denorfia and two to Venable. That's been it. Guzman will hit here with Venable at first and nobody out. They need to keep an eye on Venable. They need to maybe turn two. Valencia spins and fires and they get it out. Well, it might have been a force out at second. Unlikely that they would get two because Guzman runs well. But Valencia stayed with a bad hop and a carom and got it out. Yeah, that ball hit sharply, but Valencia right there playing it off and then picking it up right away and making a good throw over to Luke Hughes. Watch this ball kind of come up. It's the heel of the glove. And Danny keeping his eye on the ball. Where is it? Bare hands it. And then an all one motion spins and throws. See how this goes here. This is might be a manager wanting to make eye contact with a starting pitcher and seeing hopefully that Baker wants to stay in and get this guy. Quick trip to the mound by manager Ron Gardenhire. Stay with them. I'll say a big hello and get well wishes to Don Petrauschek watching tonight from his farm in uh, Seaford. Seaford. And from Andy Price. Well, here's Denorfia. He has half the Padre hits. A leadoff triple in the first and a two out single in the third. Ron Gardenhire going out, showing a lot of confidence and staying with Scott Baker.
fouled away one strike. Time for the century link high speed pitch. Well, both starters working deep into the ball game. Tim Stoffer at 93, Baker at 94. But Venable and Anorfia has been a strikeout victim of Bakers here tonight. Chopper left side. Valencia on target, two down, and the runner, Venable, stuck in second. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins LLC. Bartlett has not gotten the ball out of the infield. Tying run at second with two away. Down the middle of strike. Well, you can almost go back to the first inning when the Northia led off the game with a triple, and then Scott Baker struck out the next two batters, and then got Ludwig did that fly ball to Ben Revere that he made a great running catch. That's been it. Pitch number 115 for Baker. Bouncer to short. Nishioka. To Hughes and Baker with eight shutout innings tonight and a one nothing lead. We've got our continuing coverage coming your way on Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink, featuring the Toyota Post Game Rep. We'll talk about Baker's pitching gem tonight. What a fabulous job he did! Eight shutout innings. Just that seeing eye single in the eighth inning didn't do any damage, luckily for the Twins. Playing the wall is the instructional tonight with Ron Coomer and Burt Plyleven. Talk about how to play the wall in the carom here at Target Field and what that means to outfielders. Plus, Guardy's post game presser all coming your way on Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink. Dick. Thank you, Robbie. Both starters have been outstanding here tonight. Luke Hughes will swing away against Tim Stauffer. One strike. And strike two. Yeah, Stauffer uh, has really settled down nicely. I think again, one mistake. Danny Valencia's home run with two outs in the second inning. Logan Forsythe in at second. One and two. It'll be Hughes, Revere, and Casilla. As the Twins tried to build a insurance run here in the eighth inning. A 
off the plate, two and two. Stoffer with 96 pitches in the ball game. No walks, five strikeouts. Ooh. Sharply up the middle, a leadoff single for Hughes. So now we'll see whether uh, Revere and Casilla can help set the table maybe for Maurer. The NHL draft coming to St. Paul on Friday, June 24th. You can log on to FoxSportsNorth.com, click on the Fan Zone tab for the chance to win a VIP experience at the NHL draft, including draft tickets, a behind the scenes tour, and more. And if you'd like to join the Fan Zone, it's fast, it's free. Go to the Fan Zone tab on FoxSportsNorth.com. Again, Ozzie Guillen calls Ben Revere and the 2011 twin sardine. So we'll see whether they can uh, play a little sardine ball here and get Luke Hughes around with an insurance run. Coming up tomorrow, kids get free Blue Bunny ice cream and autographs before the game. They can run the bases here at Target Field afterward. Call 833 Twins. Visit twinsbaseball.com. Come on out to the ballpark tomorrow and take your dad to the ballpark on Father's Day. Tim Stauffer with another great outing. Not much to show for it, but another great outing. He given up one run over his last uh, three starts. He's got a chance to lose his ball game. He's only won one of those three. Tori Lupke is the new pitcher. He's the only left-hander in the San Diego bullpen, and they have designs on him someday joining the rotation. Well, yeah, Lupke uh, making his 27th appearance, 35 innings pitch, only 23 hits allowed, 12 walks with 37 strikeouts in the 35 innings pitch. Left-hander Revere, who likely will be asked to bunt here, I would think. Switch hitter Casilla and then Maurer, the next three batters. Revere tried to bunt in a similar situation. There were two runners on, nobody out in the third inning, but didn't get the bunt down. Ended up striking out. Rizzo, the first baseman, is a left handed thrower. And the sacrifice works. Revere pushing it between the mound and first base. That's a pretty nice job by Luke, who's falling uh, across toward the third base dugout, retreating and making the fielding play. Hey, you, you fielded his position right there, but a good sacrifice bunt by Ben Revere, getting Luke Hughes over to second. 
now Casilla tried to bunt for a base hit his last time up. Revere and Casilla have gotten so many big hits in June for the Twins. Casilla trying to deliver one here. Anthony's a strike. Two strikes. Luki Padres number one pick back in 2007 out of Ohio State University. September call up last year made three starts now in the bullpen. See it goes after that high fastball that fouls it back. So we've had some opportunities to tack on a run here or there after the one nothing lead in the second. Haven't gotten that hit when they've needed it. Toward the Padre dugout. Mauer on deck. Garcia hoping to take care of business here with Hughes at second and one away. One and two. Batting average overall 245, so that average with men in scoring position pretty good. Looking for their first hit tonight in such situations. Just off the plate, two and two. Provided it with a second inning home run. Two and two to Casilla. Foul. Nice catch. Fan leaning over the railing. Yeah, this game a lot like the uh, Blackburn Burley matchup yeah. that we had here on Thursday, the one nothing Twins win. Hughes at second with one away. And Hughes goes to third prematurely. Now we'll try to get back, and he gets back safely. I was kind of watching Hughes. He was going off the second baseman, how far deep they were playing. And Hughes thought about stealing third. And Luki ended up. Spinning around now, watch there's really nobody near the bag. Luke Hughes ends up beating Bartlett back to the bag. And he's going to take off right there, but able to dive back into the bag safely. Hughes with a pretty dirty uniform with a bunch of sliding uh, both on the bases and in his position at first base. Nice block by. Hundley. And it's three and two now to Casilla. They really want to get Casilla because I would imagine the Padres would like the option of considering the first base were open walking Mauer. Yeah, but 
then you got hot Michael yeah. Kadire right behind him. Good at bat right here for Casillo. Let's see if he can get a base hit and pick up an RBI. Bouncer to third. Headley. Two away. Now first base is open. And we'll see how they handle Bauer. Joe's not gotten the ball out of the infield. He hit a liner to short. A couple of grounders to second. And Kadire has been swinging a hot bat. But of course, Kadire's a right handed batter, too. Save situation, and we know Baker's done for the night. Unless the Twins score three more runs here in the eighth, it'll be a save situation. I am tight ball one. Well, looked like a breaking ball right here. Yeah, a little slider Just stayed up and in. Walk is called. So Hughes will go to third. It was home plate umpire Brian Knight that called the block. See the movement right here. Yeah. One and zero to Mauer. Pick off to third. And Hughes gets back. Well, they're they're after Luke Hughes here. They tried <laughs> to pick him off at second. Now they're trying to pick him off at third. Two and zero to Mauer. Breaking ball. Ball three. And Kadair on deck. Three and zero oh to Joe Mauer. And ball four. So Mauer takes a walk. First and third, two away, and Kadair will have to produce a hit against Chad Qualls, it looks like. Qualls, a veteran, sometime closer, primary setup man, and he'll try to keep this a 1 nothing game for San Diego.
coaches at Target Field come out and watch the state high school championship baseball games of all three classes in Minnesota. Games will be played at noon, three o'clock, six o'clock. Tickets will be on sale here at Target Field on Tuesday. Call 833 Twins if you'd like more information. Chad Paul is coming into the ball game, making his 34th relief appearance, signing as a free agent over the winter. Last year started the season with the Diamondbacks, ended up getting traded over to the Tampa Bay Rays. Eight seasons at the major league level for Chad Paul, 32 years old. Pretty good numbers on the season, and if the Padres continue to fall back in the National League West, I can imagine. Chad Balls would be in pretty high demand for contending teams trying to bolster their bullpen. Yeah, I mean, in today's game, this is a guy that's what the Rays tried to do last year. Right. When they traded for the Balls. And so Kanaya comes up with two men aboard and two out. Tonight with a double off the glove of right fielder DeNorfia in the right field corner. Walls has a sinking fastball and tight slider and a split finger. Down and away, ball one. His back, bouncer to third, Headley, second to end the inning. It will be a one nothing lead for Matt Caps as he tries to save it for Scott Baker. A one nothing ball game with Matt Caps coming in to close and not much has happened offensively. Both starting pitchers were outstanding. Yes, they were. Uh, Scott Baker, eight shutout innings. Tim Stauffer, seven very good innings. Only allowed one run, and that the home run to Danny Valencia has been the story of this ball game. Valencia is out of the ball game as Matt Tober takes over for him at third base. Matt Caps trying to save his third straight wins victory. He won it here. In that one nothing win on Thursday against the White Sox and last night's ball game picked up save number 10 by getting a, a save through six pitches all strikes. And he retired Hadley on a comebacker to end the ball game and now he gets a swinging strike one. 
the three four and five batters away Edley Ludwig and Hoff. Two strikes. Caps. Pitch up and away from Headley. Got away with one there. Two strikes. Caps had some forearm issues, but they were centered around the Twins bringing him into the eighth inning and then asking him to go back out to start another inning. As of late, because of that, they haven't asked him to do that, and he looks like he's recovered very nicely. One and two. Got him. So Hadley strikes out for the third time as Caps comes back inside to flip the corner. A good pitch right here. Caps going inside as you mentioned. And Baker who had 10 strikeouts. Caps picks up his first out on a strikeout. Ludwig 0 for 3. A couple of flies to center and a strikeout. Just off the plate, Ludwig checks one and up. But the only guy you don't want to make a mistake to right here, middle in. He, you know, hit that three-run home run in last night's ball game on a fastball in off of Alex Burnett. Mauer sitting outer half of the plate. Can you see Ben Revere? <laughs> He's out there. No doubles defense. One and one. Come on, buddy. That's tough. Caps with that sinking fastball, 94 miles per hour. Keeps it down around the knees. It's a very tough pitch to handle. One and two to Ludwig. Bouncer to second. Casilla to Hughes, two away. Good pitch down and away. That's all Ludwig could do is try to hit it back up the middle. Casilla was there to get the ground ball. Last hope for the Padres, Brad Hawk. They are one out away from being shut out for the 12th time. Has struck out twice and hit a fly ball to Kadir. One strike to Hoff.
fly ball left field. Delman Young comes in. Six in a row for the Twins. The last three saved by Matt Capps. Three saves, and in the three games, he's thrown 33 pitches. And with one home run hit in today's game, a total of $20,000 has been raised in our game for prostate cancer research. To make a donation, you can call 800 798 Cure or go online to www.pcf.org. My comrades, another one run win for the Twins, and they've already won this series with the Padres. Hey, how about that now? 13 and 3 in June as they. <laughs>